God, we thank you for keeping this rain off of our heads until just now. But we are very thankful for Emily and Chaz and their life together. Thank you for bringing them together. Thank you for their love. Thank you that we are part of their story. We thank you now that we get to celebrate with them. And we pray for your blessing on this evening and for all the good things that come from your hand. Amen. First of all, I want to thank the band. They were incredible. Uh, a very appropriate soundtrack to this event. I also want to thank Father uh, John Rumpel from St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in, in Greencastle who officiated today. He's already left, but I do want to recognize him. Uh, he did a great job and counseled uh, Chaz and Emily prior to the wedding. It takes a village to raise a child, supposedly. Well, it took a small city to put on an event like this. And, and Emily and Chaz wanted me to thank all their friends, all the, the individuals and firms that were involved in this incredible extravaganza. Thank you. It's beautiful. Everything has worked out wonderfully. It's been a wonderful night. Uh, I want to also recognize a couple of Chaz's relatives who aren't here. Uh, Catlin, Chaz's sister, is uh, with her husband in Boston. They're expecting the first child. And I think the due date's tomorrow. So we could have a, a very special toast tonight, de depending on the circumstances. A and also, Megha, uh, who's Colin's wife, is home with uh, their newborn in New York. And, and she was, she's busy taking care of a newborn. And as some of you know, that's a, quite a task. Um, but I also want to recon recognize a very special person who probably really wanted to be here tonight and was, is not here for some reason. And that's little uh, Huck Wilson Gillespie. Uh, who, who is spending a weekend at the dog park, which is a wonderful place for canines in Bloomington. But it's not the same thing. And uh, I think we should remember little Huck uh, sitting in his cage, you know, wondering what's going on. <laughs> also, I, I want to remember all those relatives, uh, grandparents and great-grandparents who aren't here. We have some wonderful pictures up front from all the different families. Uh, I don't know whether Emily and Chaz knew this, but the songs you played as the wedding was beginning, those were the songs your grandparents fell in love with, fell in love to and got married to. They were their love songs. And so they were here in a very real sense because their music was here. And uh, I couldn't help but hear Stardust and think of my parents talk about how much that song meant to them. Uh, one other thing I did want to do is Grandma Marjorie, Emily's Grandma Marjorie, my, my mother and uh, uh, Dave and Susan's mother, at her wedding to Joe, when uh, Joe came back from World War II, having spent three years in the South Pacific, worn down from dungy fever and, and malaria and just a lack of good nutrition, finally made it back to the home side and, and um, almost immediately got married to uh, my mother. And after a wedding, they had a small wedding because they did not want to wait. And uh, one of my mother's friends wrote this poem and read, it, read this at the wedding. And I want to read that tonight as a way of bringing her into this ceremony and my dad. My dreams all lead to you. When I get the feeling low and when I'm very blue, I just start in dreaming for my dreams all lead to you. When trials seem hard and lonely, as they so often do, I just start in dreaming for my dreams all lead to you. As I look into the future and see the things we've planned, I see my dreams all coming true for we're together hand in hand. Let nothing come between us, dear, so our dreams can all come true. 
And 40 years from now, I can say, my dreams still lead to you. Um, and, and I actually did a Google search on this, and it's not a published poem or a song, and it, so it was apparently written by her friend for this, this occasion. Uh, Emily, ever since the day you are, were born, you've been our beautiful daughter, and you'll always be our beautiful daughter. Uh, Chaz, you know, we couldn't be prouder to have you as a son-in-law. And you and Emily will always have our love and support. And, and finally, because you can't really do a toast without a Dylan quote. <laughs> and, and that's Bob Dylan, not Dylan Wilson. Just, just, <laughs> just make sure everybody understands. And this one is perfect. I think this one is suitably appropriate for Chaz and Emily. May your hands always be busy. May your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of changes shift. May your heart always be joyful. May your song always be sung. May you stay forever young. Forever young, forever young. May you stay forever young. To the bride and groom. We are grateful to so many of you who have traveled quite a distance to be here with us. Chaz's sibling, Ian from Hawaii, <laughs> and Colin and Fran from New York. The Minnesota, Illinois, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, East Coast, Floberg, Wilson, and McCarty family members. And Chaz and Emily's friends who have traveled from across the country to be here today. Thank you. And we are just as grateful for those of you whose trip was not as long, but who are here with us today. <laughs> Grandparents and godparents, aunts and uncles, family and friends, thank you for being here with us to celebrate Emily and Chaz. Joan and Dennis, it's been a tremendous delight reconnecting with you. You have a lovely family, and we're honored to be a part of that. Earlier this spring at a shower for Emily, we played a game that asked questions about Emily and Chaz. <laughs> How they met, which was a good story. Personal qualities and who is better at what. One of the questions on the quiz was who is the most stubborn? <laughs> Emily or Chaz? <laughs> Joan and I were sitting next to each other and we each immediately blurted out the name of our own child. <laughs> when it came time for Emily to give the answers to the Chaz and Emily quiz, Emily answered honestly, saying she is the most stubborn of the two. <laughs> While Chaz may not be the most stubborn member of the couple, I can say with certainty that he is the most patient of the two a quality that will serve him very well, and already has, I'm sure. <laughs> Chaz, little did Larry and I know when we made that long, two full days drive to Yellowstone National Park for Paul and Kelsey's wedding, that we would gain a son-in-law from that trip. <laughs> but I bet Emily did. <laughs> Since then, we've come to know what an amazing person you are, and what a perfect match you and Emily are for each other. While you've been a member of our family for several years now, we are thrilled today to welcome you officially as a member of the family. <laughs> Emily, you can be stubborn. <laughs> and I'm not saying which side of the family you get that from. <laughs> but more than that, you are funny, loving, smart, witty, artistic, independent, compassionate, loyal, considerate, and kind. <laughs> Together, you and Chaz are a beautiful, loving couple, and we wish you a lifetime of health and happiness. To Emily and Chaz. I'm John, I'm Joan's brother. And uh, you know, there's an important uh, branch of the Gillespie family that hails from Hawaii, and Ian is its patriarch. <laughs> and you've all heard 
the term aloha, which is what the island greeting is. But aloha is actually much more than that. It's kind of an ethos and a, an attitude of love and compassion, courtesy, and uh, okay. So in the early 1990s, my sister Martha and I started running road races, 5 and 10K, to keep fit and to keep our emotional and mental health <laughs> with houses full of kids. <laughs> and uh, Will Met has a 4th of July four-mile race, which was perfect for our purposes. And so Martha and I ran it for a few years. We had a lot of fun. And my mom always had a 4th of July celebration. And uh, there were lots of kids and grandkids. And, uh, and the 4th of July is Marty's and my anniversary. So this was just a good time for everybody. And as years went by, the nieces and nephews started getting older. And this 4th of July fun run looked like a lot of fun. So uh, one year, there were 10 of us in the Floberg cohort. And uh, we were walking up to the starting line. And I told them, I said, look, there's two things to remember about this race. Uh, first of all, we're here to have fun. And second, we finish in order of age. <laughs> and I'm the oldest. So we run the race, and we get to the finish line. And um, I hear a lot of cheers, and then I hear some jeers. And I get my breath, and I look up, and my nieces and nephews are all there. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Uh, I told you, I'm supposed to finish first. And, oh, John, you know, grandma could beat you. <laughs> you were tasting my dirt. <laughs> and then I look at Chaz, and I say, Chaz. Of all the people, I thought at least you'd have some respect for me. <laughs> and Chaz looks at me and says, John, I thought you were ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> to Chaz and Emily. <laughs> Aloha. My name is Colin Gillespie. I am the uh, brother of the groom. Um, before I start, uh, shout out the cake makers, Sam, her sous chefs, Allison, and Kristen. <laughs> so I am um, six years older than Chaz. Uh, he, I think, until very recently, he's the uh, uh, only person in my life who I could say I've uh, known him, his whole life. Um, I, in the sense that I can remember coming in to the kitchen of 121 Doopy Place uh, and finding my grandma Ruth there, five o'clock in the morning, um, March 4th, 1980 something. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that my uh, parents were uh, at the hospital uh, delivering my um, younger brother. And it's like a, it's a, it's a memory in the sense that that's when I began to know Chaz and know his arrival. And um, one thing, having, having known Chaz his whole life, somebody I've known my whole life, having known Chaz his whole life, one thing about him is that I think he uh, only says exclusively uh, necessary words. <laughs> So uh, what do I mean by that? I can flash forward to 2006. 2006 was a year that um, both Chaz and I graduated from respective institutions. Chaz graduated from high school. I graduated from college. There's a six-year difference. Um, if you're doing the math at home, uh, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's not because Chaz took six years to graduate from high school. <laughs> and to celebrate Chaz and Matt Weisbard and I and our friend Christina, we took a road trip around the... Um, southwest, uh, the far west, we went to Colorado, we camped in Rocky Mountain National Park, we saw Taos, New Mexico, we hiked the Grand Canyon. Um, one of Chaz's more subtle qualities, I think, is that he's a, you know, <laughs> only says necessary words. Chaz is an excellent pace setter. 
Um, this is like a pretty amazing quality, I think. It, it uh, requires not just paying attention to your own inputs and your own environment, but everybody else's. As well, Chaz led us down and out of the Grand Canyon with a lot of skill and aplomb. It's an excellent pace setter. And um, at a certain point in our trip, we uh, stayed in Taos, New Mexico, and we met a man who was like, what are you doing here? He's, he's like, oh, I'm here. I'm going to the Rainbow Festival. What is the Rainbow Festival? Also known as the Gathering of the Tribes. This is a situation where um, about 40,000 people throughout this country kind of descend on a national park and make it their own city for a while. What sort of people are these? These are like the people who might have been too weird for Burning Man. Um, so... Uh, we met this man in Taos, New Mexico, the Gathering of the Tribes, he was there. It, it to didn't totally fit with like our itinerary. People had to be back to um, Chicago, but like on the, so that towards the tail end of our trip, we decided to stop by and see the Gathering of the Tribes. We stopped, it, it was, they were tribal. It was very tribal. Um, I was talking to Matt about this, or Matt had brought this up. He, he said, well, one of the people we met was named Stick. He claimed to have no cartilage in his whole body. <laughs> Matt says that he made Chaz touch his knee to prove that it was true. <laughs> that might be embellished. But, you know, just, like, go hang out with the tribesmen. And I remember distinctly, at least one of them said, so you're having these conversations. Oh, Chaz, Matt, what are you all doing? Chaz and Matt, they just graduated from high school. What are you doing? Oh, we're going to college in the fall. So Matt says, oh, well, why would you go? Everything you need to learn is right here in the forest in Steamboat Springs. As we were leaving and going to the parking lot, I kind of said this to myself, everything you need to learn is right here. And Chaz was like, but maybe he's right. <laughs> and I had this feeling of like returning to Chicago without my brother and without Matt. <laughs> and I had to be like, well, what happened to, what happened to Chaz? He's with the tribes now. <laughs> like functionally explaining that I traded my brother to a band of gypsies for some kava tea. Just be like, it's like, it's good tea, exactly. <laughs> Chaz and Gordon, they, they wound up coming back, you know, they didn't stay among the tribes, but, um, but Chaz had said, maybe these necessary words, maybe he's right, maybe it's right that everything you need to know is in nature, and from nature, and from people who believe the same thing. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'm skipping over this part from 2010, where then Chaz eventually took the the cross-country team up to Walden and like gave a speech about how critical thinking is overrated, which I, <laughs> which I really want, which I wish I was there for. <laughs> I, <laughs> we'll flash forward to 2013. 2013, here's an excerpt from an email from Chaz to me. Things are pretty good around the house, going into the city to see friends some nights, writing mostly during the day, on weekends, drive to Indiana to see Emily, which has been really great, some running. That's been the rhythm of the past couple of weeks. <laughs> you, you have to be very subtle to pay attention to people who only say the Im uh, absolutely necessary or important things. It's that which has been really great, which took me <laughs> off to the fact that things were, things were developing and were important. It's uh, only the strictly necessary words. And I did get to meet Emily, and she uh, was obviously really great. My uh, fa father talked about gentleness last night, and we heard a lot about Emily's good qualities. I was talking to Fran um, about my speech, and she was like, make sure to mention Emily. I was like, I, I know to mention Emily. <laughs> this is like part of the thing about being in a family. There's like a lot of writers. It's like everybody's an editor, you know? <laughs> she, she also is responsible for making sure that I gave credit to the cake bakers just now. <laughs> But I will just say uh, one thing about Emily, one of her more subtle qualities, subtle qual qualities, like being a great pace setter, one of Emily's more subtle qualities that Fran brought up to me was that she's a great listener, um, which uh, I, of course, I, you know, it's a subtle quality, so I was maybe too dense to recognize it until Fran <laughs> brought it up. But it seems to me that, like when you talk about a great match, I mean, in a certain sense, like maybe the match is overdetermined in the sense of you have a very great listener with a person who only says necessary things. <laughs> but, but really the, but I had this thought, and then I was like, well, 
I mean, I've known Emily for some time, not her whole life, but I know Chaz is only says necessary things, so maybe Emily is the same way. I suspect it might, it might be true. Um, so uh, that was 2006, 2010, and uh, 2013 and 2019, only necessary words. Uh, the words today, uh, I will, I will, those are the big words from Chaz and Emily. I will comfort you. <laughs> Uh, I will be yours to keep, I will keep you. Chaz said it, he only says necessary words. You can be sure that he meant it. You can be sure that Emily meant it also, and that she also heard it. You can also be sure that Chaz said it because it was only an absolutely necessary thing to say. So to Chaz and Emily. Necessary couple, yeah. cheers. So I am Emily's maid of honor. I am Sarah Myers. And I don't have a single memory growing up that does not include Emily. We met when I was six and Emily was five years old. Um, and since we both only had brothers, we were pretty much sisters from the start to each other. We went on adventures in my backyard. We created whole lives in Emily's amazing dollhouse. Emily came with me to my family reunions, and I went with Emily to her Irish dancing competitions. <laughs> we had ill-fated attempts in ballet and track together, and our families even traveled to Canada every summer with each other. We celebrated birthdays and holidays, traveled to Switzerland as Girl Scouts, and saw each other off to college. We've been there for each other through every heartbreak and every triumph. And as Emily said to me earlier today, a circle is round, it has no end. That's how long I'll be your friend. Our adventures have steadily grown since we were five and six, but I can't imagine what my life would be like without Emily in it, and I can't wait to see what future memories we create together. I could not be happier to be with you two today. I love you both. Cheers. Cheers. 